All right, well, this just arrived in the mail, so I thought I'd do a sort of impromptu unboxing. If you, obviously you've seen the th thumbnail, you probably already know what it is. Uh, so let's just go ahead and open it up. All right, so here it is. This comes from Andonstar, um, and full disclosure, they did uh, send this to me. They reached out and asked if I wanted to uh, take a look at it and feature it on a video, uh, but they haven't asked me to, uh, you know, say anything one way or the other regarding the uh, product itself, at least as far as what I think. So all thoughts and opinions are my own. I'm not being otherwise paid or influenced in any way uh, to, say one thing or the other they just requested that i mention and star and uh, i will leave a link down in the description where you can purchase one of these yourself uh that being a digital microscope so uh this is pretty cool actually um at least in uh, the the concept of it so let's just open it up and uh, you'll see what i mean all right and there is the instruction manual you can see a preview of what it will look like when it's all set up it is definitely in multiple languages as is the uh, norm for these types of things it does explain uh, all the different, uh, you know, features, aspects of it here. And it also has all the specs there on the side. You can see, <laughs> I won't really explain too much what that stuff means until we actually open it up and take a look at the inside. All right, and there you can see, pretty nicely laid out in there relatively small as well uh, not super small but just kind of a compact size let's get it out of here you see it does have a remote as well and also a wired controller um, a USB wall wart which is uh, <laughs> nice to have not always a given with modern-day electronics All right, and that is everything that came in the box uh, taken out and laid out uh, So you may have seen if you watch a lot of retro tech channels uh, something like this Adrian's digital basement, I think featured one. It was a bit of a larger size compared to this um, This one is a little bit more compact and You might say a little bit streamlined in a way But you do have LED lights that are on bendable arms that come down and That will shine on the part that you're working on. Of course, you do have the screen according to the manual the screen is five inches it does have the ability to move them up and down obviously uh, to help you uh, get it in focus and you have the various controls on here not much to see until we power it up so let's just go ahead and get it all hooked up and we'll kind of take it up for a test drive incidentally don't worry the scripted videos are still happening I'm actually working on one you can kind of see a preview of that over there uh, but I kind of set that aside for just a, a little bit to take a look at this and then we'll be right back to regular video production. So uh, stay with me. When you get it all set up uh, this is pretty much 
what you get. Uh, so yeah, a lot of wires, and it's kind of interesting how it works. Um, so if you want to use the LED lights, that barrel plug in the back is what you need for that. Uh, then the screen actually gets separate power, uh, so it's electrically uh, completely separate from you know the lights, which are the only uh, things powered on the base. This whole thing here is pretty much one unit, so the scope with the screen on top and the rest is essentially just a really sturdy stand. It is very heavy and substantial feeling, but you don't have to have everything hooked up if you don't want. If you have your own lights, you can kind of just bend these out of the way and they do include a simpler cable, which just goes to the screen part. So you just have that uh, simple A to B connection there. Uh, but yeah, just to power it on, we'll hit, go ahead and hit the power button on the remote here. Oh, and I just blinded myself. But yeah, you can see, there we go, it boots up. Yeah, so uh, that pattern you see on the screen right now, that is actually the base um, of the, uh, the stand there. And we'll just grab uh, just a random graphics card, an FX 5500 here, and stick that underneath. And let's see if we can get this in focus. All right, so adjusting the height a bit, you can kind of start to see it's a fan hub, obviously. Let's see if we can get like a memory. Oh yeah, I think we can adjust the focus further. There we go, wow. Uh, yeah, dust and hairs and whatever else, uh, you see it all. Um, so this is, that's the maximum height. So it does get very zoomed in. As you can see, I am actually not, I'm not really even able to fit an entire memory chip on the screen at once. And if we, let's see if we could find something really small here. I'm trying to get this in focus here. Uh, doesn't look like it wants to. Let's see if we raise it up just a little bit. There we go. I just did like a little tiny turn and it snapped into focus. And that is a tiny little resistor there. And that's one of the legs of the, uh, the memory chip there. So yeah, that's tiny. Let's see, we can actually adjust the light a little bit more optimally. There we go. That looks pretty awesome. Just checking out some of the controls here. This is picture mode. And on the top, there's actually a micro SD card slot. So yeah, focusing back on uh, all of the stuff on up here, uh, the micro SD card slot is obviously this, is indicated by the little symbol there but there's also a mini HDMI port. So one of the cool things about this unit is that you can actually use it to record what you're doing and it saves it directly on the device itself or you can output it to either an external screen or a capture device, which uh, I'll be testing out and get direct feed from the scope itself and uh, save it as a video file in multiple ways. So we'll test the quality of the built-in video recording as well as the capture from the HDMI port. And this port here is for a 3.5 millimeter AV plug. The cable does not come with this unit, but uh, that's an option if you want like a standard definition output. I'm not sure why you would. You would obviously lose a ton of detail using that but uh, the options there, I guess. All right, for the initial test, we'll go ahead and insert a micro SD card here. Now, it does seem like you need a pretty long fingernail to get it in here. Yeah, it's kind of tricky. I might actually have to get a tool or something to, to push that down. There we go. Yeah, I cannot do that with my fingernail. 
Uh, so that might be a little tricky for some, but theoretically you wouldn't have to remove that if you didn't want to once you get it in there. All right, so once it's in video mode, you'll see the icon there in the corner. Um, so you should be able to just hit this button down here, which should start the recording. And there's a memory error. Uh, so yeah, we got to look into that. The memory card uh, was formatted weird, so that's on me, but uh, let's go ahead and turn this on. I'm still saying card error. Okay, so <laughs> I had to switch to another uh, micro SD card because the older one I had didn't work, so I had to pull a newer one out of uh, my phone to uh, get one that finally worked and didn't pop up with any errors. So let's go ahead and try out the recording feature. Uh, card error. Yeah, well, that's a bummer. Unfortunately, I don't know what's going on, but the uh, micro SD reader isn't liking any of the cards I have. I've tried formatting it different ways. Um, so uh, let's move on to some of the other features. All right, so on the remote, besides uh, power, let's hold this right side up, but you do also have brightness controls for the LEDs. So that's pretty cool. Now on the remote, there is way more features uh, available. So you have, for example, uh, that would be the capture button. So if the card reader portion was uh, working, uh, you could capture you know footage directly off of that. But you also have the uh, this snowflake here, which freezes the image. So now I'm moving it around, but the image is stationary. So that's pretty cool. That works without a uh, micro SD card. You just push it again to resume normal operation. And then you also have brightness controls on here, which is different from the wired remote. So if I do that, you can see it's actually changing the exposure on the microscope camera. So that's pretty nifty. And you also have up and down, you've got the option to digitally move it in. So zoom in there and really close. There's a bit of a lag with that. And you also have uh, a button for PAL or NTSC uh, if you're using the AV output, I assume. You also have this one, which the manual says is cross line. Let's see what that does. Ah. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. There's a very thin red line on the screen now. So I guess that's to help you line it up or whatever. So you also have digital uh, sharpening, uh, which is the triangles. You have uh, contrast as well. Contrast high, medium, low. You have invert. Well, that's pretty cool. And then you have this button, which actually makes it monochrome, black and white. So none of those fussy, annoying colors to distract you. And then you have this lock and unlock button, which uh, supposedly keeps the uh, recording feature from overwriting files when the memory card is filled up. So that seems rather important. I wouldn't expect it to overwrite files, but I guess that's what it does. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you don't want that to happen, uh, make sure that's locked. And then this button down here is unmarked and the manual doesn't specify what it does. And indeed pressing it does nothing. So this is probably a generic remote that was repurposed for this application. It just has a set number of buttons there uh, and uh, they didn't need that one. Of course, we can't forget about the menu button here. So pressing that actually brings up a lot of the options that you'll find uh, d buttons on the remote directly to uh, control. So for example, exposure, while it's available on the remote via buttons, you can also access it there. Uh, cross curve, let's see what that is. 
on off. Okay, let's turn it on. Uh, oh, that activates the, the cross hair over there, so don't need that, but there's a button to do that on the remote directly. And uh, you can change the date stamp as well. You can manipulate the colors directly, it looks like. Or not really. <laughs> you just choose black and white or invert. So again, there's, there's buttons directly for, to do that on the remote. So this kind of seems maybe redundant. So that's nice. I guess you have a, a interface there for that, but not really that useful. All right, and with the HDMI cable hooked up to the capture card, uh, you can see it is updating in real time, so it's outputting directly to the capture card. The uh, external screen, or the built-in screen, I should say, does turn off with that plugged in, um, but using OBS, we can go ahead and record Right there and we'll put that back into full screen and right now just from what i can see on the monitor the quality is extremely good like there's no i don't see any like interlacing or anything like that um that's actually quite nice there you can see a closer view of the monitor um as well as direct feed capture um really really pretty nice and if I get this teeny tiny capacitor in the shot here you can see how huge uh, my little tiny needle nose tweezers are compared to this thing like that is insane there's a little bit of a uh, lag from what you're doing to what it shows on the screen. Could be due to the capture card, but that's just something to keep in mind if you are uh, using a capture software. Uh, we can try outputting it directly to the monitor itself. Right, and there it is, uh, directly attached to the monitor this time. And let's test it. So there's a teeny tiny little bit of lag, but uh, this is a lot more usable. This is something you can actually work with. It's not like really laggy. And more importantly, <laughs> you're not gonna be able to see that nearly as well with your naked eye or just with a, like a magnifying glass like I was using before. Now with the USB plugged directly into a computer, uh, you'll see this screen pop up. So you just use the controls down here, the up and down arrow to choose if you want to use uh, you know, if you want to uh, access the storage. Um, so if you select that option, it should pop up on your computer screen as a storage device. So you can access the files on the SD card without having to remove it, which is nice. And you could choose to also use it as a USB camera or a video camera as well. Now, I would be remiss not to talk about the software that comes with it. When you type in the URL, uh, it, uh, that's in the manual, it takes you to a Dropbox page, uh, which is, uh, well, not the most professional thing ever, but you can download that, and there you go, and then we can go ahead and install it. It does say it supports all the way back to uh, Windows XP, which is kind of interesting. Now, once you load up the software, you're greeted with this interface. You can go into uh, the select device and choose USB camera, supposing you set it correctly on the device itself. And it should pop up with an image captured from the scope. But unfortunately, as you can see, it comes up as a complete glitchy mess on my particular scope. And um, I could not resolve this, uh, unfortunately. I tried different USB cables, and uh, it would just always come up like this. I've messed with all the different settings, and yeah, this isn't normal. It's supposed to show as a, uh, well, obviously as an extension of what you are capturing, and you can use the tools built into this program to measure distances between things and another form of capture and lots of various features that I unfortunately was not able to play with uh, without uh, a working input. 
Well, it's been uh, about a week since I recorded uh, the earlier footage you just saw. And um, unfortunately, uh, messaging the manufacturer about it and, uh, you know, taking a couple of their suggestions, uh, nothing seems to really get the USB video output uh, to work. So unfortunately, that does mean that for uh, the unit I have here, the capture via USB connected to a computer isn't working. Um, so in my case, I would have to use an HDMI cable to the capture card. Um, trying different cables, trying different ports on the computer, uh, none of that really seemed to, to fix the issue. So I, I do believe, unfortunately, that this one has maybe a defect with the USB port on top. If that is the case, um, with your unit, definitely do uh, send it back, request on Amazon to have a, another one uh, sent to you and get it replaced because uh, that uh, may be a useful feature for, for some people. But I don't think that's representative of, you know, what you'll get if you were to buy this. I think that is just an anomaly here with my particular one. Um, but otherwise, everything else works. Matter of fact, I was finally able to find a micro SD card that works in here. I found a 16 gig card uh, that it seemed to like. And that's maybe the only thing I'll knock about this is that it's very picky about your micro SD card. It has to be formatted a specific way. I do believe the one I have in here is uh, formatted for NTFS. It does not seem that micro SD XC or the expanded capacity cards uh, work on here, or at least I would not expect them to work on here because uh, they just don't seem to function. They, they just come up with an error. So just go with more conservative sized uh, micro SD cards. The 16 gig one seems to work. Uh, I'm not sure why the 8 gig one I had earlier didn't work, but uh, this one I got out of uh, my old LG phones is functioning. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that real quick. So you have on the remote, you have a, a few different modes. So we're going to go ahead and choose. This is according to the manual. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little camera icon there. And if we look at the menu, the camera icon is standby mode. So going to the next mode is capture mode. So let's do that now. Go into capture mode. There you go. And then we'll press the capture button, or you could also do that on here using that button down there, which you can't really see the exposure setting I have on the camera here, but uh, we'll press that and it took a picture. So then if I press uh, mode again, uh, there you go. So now you can view the picture that I took. It does have the wrong date on there because I didn't set the date, but uh, that is an image saved on the, the micro SD card. And going up and down on the buttons here, you can check out another image I took. Uh, so just a few images there. But the other issue that I have is that if you look, the next mode is record mode. So there's a camera and a little, uh, what I assume is gonna be like a little record uh, red circle there. If I press uh, the mode button, goes back into standby, press it again, goes into the capture, and push it again, it skips the record mode and goes to image playback mode. So for whatever reason, the record feature is missing on here. It's not showing up at all. Uh, when I try to go into the, the record mode, it's not working. So I'm not able to get video capture going on here. Um, you know, looking through the menu and looking through the manual, I don't see a solution for that. It's kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of strange. And we do have a main system settings as well, so you can set the date and time, the language, the TV mode. Again, a lot of these settings are on the remote itself. And we also have a format. So let's see here, format, all data will be deleted. So. Apparently you can format the micro SD card in here. Let's see if this works with the eight gig card that wasn't working earlier. Okay, well, I've let this run for about an hour now and uh, nothing's happened. So uh, basically I don't think uh, it, it likes this 
SD card, the 8 gig one, but at least I know the 16 gig card does work, so there's not really a defect with that. It's just very, very picky. So overall, what do I think of the uh, the microscope from Andon Star? Well, uh, I think this could be a really useful tool for a number of people. And given the price, it's not the most expensive example of one of these. You may find that the, the size of the screen is a little bit of an advantage compared to some of the larger ones if you are hooking this up to an external screen for example you don't have a big uh, useless screen in front of you that's kind of blocking the view and uh, you know i like a lot of the features the features that work on this example like being able to uh, output through hdmi unfortunately the recording that's supposed to be built in just doesn't show up at all in the in the the, the modes um, so that's a bummer. Um, it would be nice to be able to use this as a standalone recording device and that is an advertised feature and for whatever reason with the only micro SD card I have that worked on this uh, video recording was not working just picture capture but um, there is still a lot to like here as far as the the usability of being able to see much more clearly what you're working on on just a very tiny minute scale and everything has heavy duty like metals for the base and these are aluminum as well you don't necessarily want these in the path of a like a, a hot air gun or anything like that but they do provide a substantial amount of light and you know not just for people that want to do a lot of like really small scale rework and be able to easily be able to view it but also for uh, people that are potentially making videos either for demonstrational purposes like say you are a teacher professor or somebody who is uh you know doing a class on this kind of thing you know you can hook something like this up to a projector and show a lot of people in a room what you're doing but of course, video production as well, which would be my purpose. So in the future, if I want to do uh, a repair job on something of a small scale, this is way better than positioning a camera like uh, <laughs> this one here that's on tripod. And I can't really get real close to what I'm, I'm doing. I have to just kind of get the best angle possible while not blocking my, uh, my arms and hope for the best and just kind of explain what's going on this would show it directly so yeah i mean i think this is a cool idea i don't do product overviews like this very often and the only reason i agreed to this one is because of that that novelty that usefulness uh for not just people like me but also some of the other uh channels out there that watch my videos and for you if you're just a regular viewer and you are skilled enough to do surface mount or SMD uh, repair work and things of that nature, then, you know, this will be a lot easier on the eyes than trying to squint or just use a simple magnifying glass. The, the image quality coming out of the microscope here um, is fantastically sharp. And uh, the output coming from the HDMI port uh, was also very, very clean as well a little bit of interlacing but not really noticeable not unless you're sliding the the thing you're working on around and really shifting the screen a lot so um yeah look into it um i recommend it to people that have particular situations that could benefit from this uh but yeah i'll leave a link down in the description i'm not getting any kickback for clicking that link i'm just going to leave it there for your convenience so uh that's about all i have to say about this uh so thank you for uh, watching this kind of cobbled together video of the Andon Star microscope. So yeah, take care. One last little thing. Oh.